video time. Okay, so closed cooling system. Right here is uh, the pressure bottle for um, the closed system. And uh, today we're gonna get rid of that. I also have a new radiator, so we can upgrade that. Pretty simple. Take the bottle out and bypass these lines. So this line has to go, and this line has to go. So it'd be really cool if I could just like cut through there and then put a cap on there, then I wouldn't have to touch anything. But I'm probably gonna have to cut these uh, tubes uh, and get extensions and adapters to go into here and to go into there. So I'll have to pick them up later. Besides that, this whole bottle goes. You can take this bracket out in order to hopefully have room down there for the uh, different cooling bottle. Uh, for the radiator, the only thing it changes is um, that you're going to have a radiator cap, you know, like most cars. And that'll sit right around here. So that means that you need to have uh, a line that goes from here all the way down there and into the bottle. And that's about seven feet. So you're going to want to pick up seven foot of tube along with you can either just replace these completely or just go and replace these. The reason why I say just these uh, is because there's different sizes. There is a five ace and a three quarters. I don't know which one's which, but when they go here, they switch sizes. So this goes like three quarter to five eighths, and this one's five eighths to three quarters. I don't know why, but uh, it does that. So yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna take the radiator out now. So uh, basically, I'm just gonna drain the coolant and unscrew away. Okay. The uh, radiator supports out, and now it's time to drain the coolant from the system. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can properly do this on the radiator down here. There is a, uh, a petcock. Um, look, look with your special eyes. There you go. It's right there. It's that little knob thingy. Uh, you can't reach it anywhere. It's it's a very terrible design. I don't know how the fuck you're supposed to get to that with this uh, radiator support thing in the way. So fuck that. There is an engine drain plug. You have to go underneath the engine and break a bolt loose that's, you know, been in the engine. So, uh, I'm gonna do it the easy way. Most people go from the lower radiator hose, and I'll do that eventually, but uh, a cool trick that I found out is since this switch has got to come out, I'm gonna take the switch out and uh, drain it that way. I'm not using a catch pan because this is all water, so uh, it's good for the environment. Well, water and stop leak. Away she flows! And to help it drain a little better, take off this pressure cap and she'll go flying. Yum! No more red. Ta-da! Okay, um, got the, uh, the transmission cooler lines up and out of the way so they don't get too fucked up. Coolant is drained. Uh, I did have a catch plan for the ATF. The environment let, might like water, but they probably don't like transmission fluid. So, radiator's out. The water that came out of there was so fucking brown, it was terrible. Uh, I'm gonna try my best to see if I can like run a garden hose through this system. Try and get some more of that stop leak crap out. Cause uh, I don't want my new radiator to have what the old crap had. So I don't know, I guess I'll try uh, cleaning some shit out. Okay, so uh, no more pressure bottle. The bottom hose was a bitch, cut it off with a razor blade. Fuck that little thing. Um, because of the bottle, we can also get rid of this bracket. It is now useless. Um, I took a garden hose and uh, shoved it in there because it fit quite well. Uh, turned it on some low pressure and let it uh, run through the, uh, the whole system. Let it ran, run out the lower hose until uh, clear fluid came out. Then I blocked off the lower hose, held it as tight as I could until the pressure made it squirt back out here until that was clear. This looks kind of brown, but I don't think that activates unless the thermostat is on or open. So the engine is still mucky water. All right, it's time to put the radiator in. Um, I'm missing a rubber isolator. There's an isolator there underneath that support, and it was originally on uh, the left side over there. 
but I put it over here because I feel like more of the weight's sitting on this, uh, these, this side of the compressor. Um, I don't feel like going out and buying one, so I made one. Took some of the old heater, uh, heater hose that's not being used, and uh, cut a little hole in it to make a little makeshift isolator, so at least things don't rub as much as they would normally. Yeah! Alright, so here we are inside. This is the uh, the new radiator it got. It's from Spectra. It was only 70 bucks. Got it off Amazon. So it's cheap, and uh, it fits the bill. Perfect form fit. I've heard a lot of good reviews about this thing fitting perfectly inside the vehicle. And it comes with all the fittings you need. Right here, you'll notice this big difference. You got a radiator cap, and uh, the overflow line right there. And then down here we have the one transmission cooler line. The slot for the uh, the fan switch, the lower radiator uh, hose, the lower uh, transmission cooler line, and then over here you just have the uh, the upper hose. You also need this version uh, pressure bottle, which has a fitting right there for that tube. So there's going to be a tube that goes here to here. Also, there's um, right there that's pressure relief. And uh, obviously you're going to need a radiator cap because the radiator does not come with one. And since I didn't have one that previously had a cap, I needed to get a cap. So this is a fancy little vent system where you flip the top up and it vents safely. So that's cool. Alright, so besides needing hoses, I have all the main stuff. Okay, I don't know when I last left off, but um, here we are. Radiator is fully in place. All connections have been made. Upper radiator hose connected, lower radiator hose connected, got the lower cooling line, the upper cooling line, and we got the cap on. So, uh, radiator is done. All I gotta do is put the auxiliary fan back in and hook it up. Um, so the next part, gonna be this cooling bottle. So you gotta figure out what you're trying to crush in order to do that. Um, someone already, like the, the previous owner already clipped my, uh, my heater control valve right uh, here and here's the hose clipped and the other hose that comes out of the cab uh, he plugged into that instead of plugging I'm pretty sure that goes to my front axle <laughs> I have no idea what that does or what it used to go to but I feel like it shouldn't go to that I I don't know I'll have to look into that eventually but uh, it's probably not the way that should be Anyway, bottle location. That's not the bottle. Where's the bottle? Where's the bottle? This guy is going to sit right um, in. Perfect. In the newer models, they sit uh, something, something like this. Like that. I think, no, other way. Something like that, maybe. I don't know. The, uh, the uh, cables to the AC pump run a little differently, and it sits like here. So uh, I guess I'll have to figure out how to fiddly fart it into there. Maybe this way. I don't know. I'll figure out some way to fit it in there. I'll let you know. Okay, so I'm finally back, and uh, as you'll notice, it's a little darker out. Oh, these motherfuckers were such a bitch to find. But they are adapters. And they go from 5 eighths to 3 quarter. Heater hose adapters. So, I found out that my, uh, this is where I'm going to put the coolant bottle at. With the, the hump sticking towards the back. That seems like it fits a lot better. And when it rests, it'll rest like down and on this hose. So that seems to be the best. So we got the spout here. Here's the 5 16 fuel line. I'm going to cut that to length and hook it in there. I'm just going to have it run across all this. This way. Zip tie it up here so it doesn't hit the fan. And into the radiator. Just like that. These hoses I'm going to cut up and uh, hook up to the heater core. And attach with those adapters. And then uh, we'll have to figure out some kind of bracket to keep this thing in place. Alright, let's do that. Here we are, update time. So, here we are. New heater hoses. 
with the adapters and the hose clamps, and they go into there. So, left one goes to the top, and the right one goes to the bottom. I also uh, turned this bracket around and moved it over a hole so that uh, it's closer to this. So maybe in time, maybe I can attach it to there to make it look nicer. I just got to tighten these guys down. All right, should be good. Uh, in order to hold this bottle, I'm going to take the bracket and uh, repurpose it. So if you notice, cut uh, a chunk out of it there. That goes around the bottle, around this little gap, and goes that way. Uh, and the part that we cut out, uh, maybe screw or weld here, go this way, and then use an L bracket to connect into there. So that it'll go, it'll go back to a coolant bottle holder. Okay, so here we are. This is basically the final setup. So we got our new radiator in place. We got our new um, radiator cap in place. We got the, uh, the overflow line that I have zip tied there. Zip tied there to the radiator support. And zip tied there. So that should keep it out of the way of the fan. So it spins just a nice gap there. Comes over here and it's, uh, it doesn't go too much higher. It only goes higher at the auxiliary fan so it shouldn't run into the hood too often. Uh, nothing here. I'm going to have it zip tied here and over this to there. I didn't put it this way because this, uh, this hood latch would get in the way. You can see the rub mark right there. There's no room. I tried putting it underneath, and it just looks silly under it. So I did it like that. Uh, for the bracket, um, uh, my dad's trying to find stuff for the welder, so I haven't really finished this up yet, but I can just screw that back on there. And I'll hold it for the most part. I mean, it's not going to go too far, but uh, I will figure out something for that coming up eventually. And then we got this part right here. Both the hoses that come from the thermostat and the water pump go into the heater core. And that's it. And there, it's a tied there. So everything's nice and tidy. So I'm going to put water in this thing and uh, see what happens. All right, and here we are in action. She's running. It's a little brown. Before it used to be fully clear. So that means some of the water came from the radiator up into there. Tighten that up because it looked like it was leaking a little bit. But uh, clearance looks good. Everything sounds pretty good. I'm happy with it so far. I don't know. I'd call this a success, you know, but I haven't really driven around yet. Ouch. It was all the way up to 210, and then it started to drop down, so I'm guessing the, uh, the thermostat finally opened up. So if you notice, she runs quite cool now. Pretty impressive. I think that's a job well done. 